Hi, doctor. Good afternoon, doctor. Thank you very much for joining us, and I want to ask you a few questions, Josh. Josh Messingill is an attorney, licensed attorney, and an expert in his field. So I'll be asking a few questions. Please feel free to send us your comments. Of course, we will follow up with emails and so on. But at this point, let's ask some questions and, you know, get familiar with what it is that he does. So, Josh, you and I have spoken before. We know each other quite well. And there's all kinds of information that you have, which I would like to share with all of our listeners. How did you get started? What made you decide to build a legal practice around chiropractors as you are today? Well, that's a great question. Uh, I guess I would say it was just a happy accident. I uh, went to law school in California and then graduated sort of into the financial crisis, the financial meltdown. So it was not a good time to be an attorney in Los Angeles. So I ended up in Washington, D.C., where I worked uh, in Congress for a little while and then uh, decided to start a family, come back to Texas. So I ended up in the Texas Senate Committee on Health and Human Services, and then completely by accident was handling issues relating to scope of practice for the various types of health practitioners. You know, So what can an optometrist do versus an ophthalmologist? And what can a chiropractor do you know, versus a physician? And so I developed some expertise there, and then eventually sort of grew weary of government service and decided to kick out into private practice and had considered purchasing a, a law practice from somebody who was a catering predominantly to DCs. That didn't actually work out, but that kind of sent me down that path. And then, oddly enough, at the same time, ended up picking up uh, a job as the lobbyist for the Texas Chiropractic Association. And at that point, my fate was sealed. So I always tell people that I'm not a chiropractor, but chiropractors are how my kids eat. So. Uh, my life is completely intertwined with the world of chiropractic. Oh, beautiful. Amazing. So you, you just said that you represent the Texas Chiropractic Association as a lobbyist. Can you expound on that a little more? Can you tell me more about that? Sure, yeah. Well, it's, it's always exciting. Uh, some people may not realize that the Texas Medical Association is ex extremely strong. I tell people they're extremely strong and extremely wrong. They're one of the most powerful medical lobbies in the nation. And in my experience, they tend to put physicians and the interest of, of their doctors above the interest of patients. And so they're all into fighting turf wars and things. So Texas has really narrow chiropractic scope. Um, but the, the Chiropractic Association really, I've found, values patients and puts the patients first. And they're just focused on making sure that each doctor can you know, practice the way they want to practice and recognizing that there are many different paths. So for some people, you know, medical integration makes a lot of sense. Other people, that's not the way they want to practice. But just making sure that people can practice up to their level of education and training. So it's been a real joy to represent them. And, and there's a lot of uh, good harmony between that and, you know, my private legal practice where I work with chiropractors day in and day out. So, Josh, what is the current state of chiropractic and tick sex today? What, how are things going the, as we speak about today? What, what is the current state of that? That's a great question. So, um, as I said, Texas has a very powerful medical lobby. They're very influential. And, and for that reason and, and probably other reasons, Texas has very narrow chiropractic scope. So, depending on who you ask, and it's not super scientific, but there has been a survey done of all 50 states that said that chiropractors in Texas have uh, the most narrow scope of any, uh, you know, of chiropractors in any, any state. And so that's, uh, it's challenging. Um, and then there are some lawsuits going on that are uh, posing some challenges. Uh, the Association of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine has sued the chiropractic board in Texas relating to acupuncture and dry needling. And then of course, TMA seems like always has a lawsuit going on. Right now, they're suing about nerves and the role that nerves play in chiropractic and, and the role of, you know, nerves in the subluxation complex. So there's always, a, you know, a lot happening. We, we stay, <laughs> stay pretty busy. Uh, I guess the one other thing I would mention is that we recently uh, were able to tweak the state's laws about medical integration and who can own a medical facility. So that's opened up some really great opportunities for doctors in Texas. So there's, uh, there's a lot going on here in the Lone Star State. <laughs> well, this is great. So speaking about medical integration, as you know, I 
I've been doing medical integration for the last 25 years, and of course that's been the focus of most of my career as a consultant throughout the country. We have probably about 75, 78 clinics in Texas, We're about 1,200 clinics throughout the country, but I'm more interested in that information. I heard that you actually wrote, and correct me if I'm wrong, you wrote a law book uh, allowing chiropractors to co-own a medical entity, medical center in Texas. Is that right? Well, yes and no. How's that for a lawyerly answer? Uh, Yes and no. Um, Yeah, I was part of the team that helped draft and pass Senate Bill 679, which was passed in 2017. And that's the law that allows a chiropractor to co-own a medical entity with a physician. Now, I wouldn't say wrote it per se, because there wasn't a lot of writing. I mean, the truth is, what we did was we took a statute that had previously existed for optometrists and podiatrists and we just mirrored that language for chiropractors. So now in Texas, if a DC wants to integrate his or her practice, they can actually co-own a medical entity with a physician. Now, each practitioner has to stay in their lane, of course, but they, they can do it in one single entity. So previously, doctors who wanted to integrate had to set up a management company and with a management contract, and there was a lot of sort of difficulty there and some compliance headaches. Now it can be done in one entity, and that's something that we did uh, as the association and got passed in 2017. Oh, that's so quite we're amazing. Really proud of that. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, very much so. And we absolutely, absolutely, on behalf of all doctors nationwide, I want to extend my uh, certainly gratitude for you and your team and what you've done. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell to get my latest update.